Hey guys, James here and welcome back to my channel. If you've seen other videos on my channel, you're probably well aware that I have huge respect for what Mazda is doing recently with its vehicles. And earlier today, I learned a few things about the design of the Mazda 3 and CX-30 that made me respect Mazda even more. And it all started when I was reading online to learn more about one of Mazda's most unique, one of their most subtle and most interesting design cues. I'm talking about the S-curve that you can see in the side of the Mazda 3 sedan, the Mazda 3 hatch, and the CX-30. I'm gonna tell you the incredible lengths that Mazda went through to make this thing happen. Most cars out there, including some of Mazda's models, are more or less cylinders on the side, right? It's the, the side of the car is basically a section of a cylinder and then the designers add a little bit of visual interest by adding creases or trim pieces to kind of liven up the design. In the pursuit of creating a more premium design that was both organic and minimalist, Mazda really avoided adding a whole bunch of details and they wanted to design something simple but striking at the same time. Mazda says that the S-curve is not mathematically perfect. Instead, it was sculpted by hand and perfected over two years to play with light and shadow and reflection in just the right ways. It's actually very difficult to stamp a sheet of metal into such a complex shape. And the reason is that any imperfections or variations can easily be seen by the eye precisely because there are no creases or trim pieces to interrupt the flow of reflections as your eye follows that S shape. To Mazda though, having that beautiful S shape was worth the trouble, but little did they know that the trouble was just beginning. When Mazda began to mass produce the Mazda 3, they realized that some of the initial vehicles that were painted in Seoul red didn't look as alive as the prototypes. They realized that the dyes used to stamp those door panels were a little too perfect. They had been polished to a mirror-like shine, which meant that the production cars had similarly smooth door panels. By contrast, the prototypes had been sculpted and sanded by hand and then painted, which meant that the paint actually had a microscopically rough substrate to stick onto and therefore play with light differently than the production cars. So Mazda sanded down their dies in that same way so that the stamped metal parts could have those microscopic imperfections which would help the paint glow and shine in the same way as the prototypes. But that wasn't the end of the problems that they encountered to make this S-curve come to life. The team realized that the prototypes had another source of human imperfection that actually made the cars more beautiful. And that was the fact that the prototypes were painted by a human. Because those early production cars had essentially an even coat of paint across all the body panels, they actually just didn't look as interesting as the prototypes. So Mazda had one of their master painters paint the body of a Mazda 3 in a way that really accentuated and really brought out the car's sculptural beauty. And meanwhile, a computer was recording all of his moves, every stroke, every spray. These variations in the paint actually become part of the vehicle's art, and they're intentionally replicated to reproduce that master painter's work in every production Mazda 3 and CX-30. In three different ways then, the side panels alone of the Mazda 3 and CX-30 show that as humans, we don't always look for mathematical or scientific perfection in something as emotional as a car. The S-curve was sculpted by hand, not by math. The dies used to stamp out those door panels were microscopically roughed up in just the right ways to induce movement in the paint's reflections. And the paint itself is not just a protective covering over the metal. Instead, the Mazda 3 and CX-30 are actually painted pieces of art, or more accurately, they are precise replications of a master painter's work. Now, all of this is wonderful and it makes me respect Mazda even more, but it does raise a really important question in my mind. And that is, what happens if you get into a little fender bender and your car is repaired the normal way? Would the repainted panel look weirdly mismatched next to a panel that was perfectly crafted from the factory? I don't know the answer to that, but what I do take away from all this is that Mazda truly is committed to being a car company that brings together technology art and organic inspiration to make really special vehicles. And their ability to think differently, their willingness to subtract while everyone else is adding to their vehicles, 
is what makes Mazda so cool to me. I hope this was an informative and interesting dive into one of the most subtle, but in my opinion, truly beautiful design cues on modern Mazdas, and the really astounding lengths that Mazda as a company went through to make it all come together in exactly the way they wanted it to. If you enjoyed this video, if you could do me a favor, hit that like button down below. It really helps out my little itty bitty channel. And also hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the content I have coming out. Again, my name is James. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you in the next video.